Hi, everyone. We're going to be talking about calculus of the loop-de-loop, -loop, which is my final project for MVC this semester. And just for some overview, uh, we'll be talking about some different designs of loops, which have been changing over the years. And we'll also be designing our own version of the loop-de-loop. -loop. So if you look at this picture here, um, you can probably tell that th it's very old, but these pictures are very old. And you'd be right, because they were taken around 1900 in Coney Island, New York. And um, what was wrong with these loops? So a lot of passengers experienced discomfort, whiplash, blackout, and loss of consciousness while riding these loops. And uh, for this reason, they're not in use anymore. But what was specifically wrong about them? We'll be taking a look. So these circular roller coasters reportedly subjected riders to almost 12 G of centrifugal forces. And humans can't endure more than 6 G. And even though they didn't know this at the time, um, these roller coasters were very dangerous. And so they got shut down almost 10 or 20 years after they went into operation. So let's just look at circular loop physics briefly to understand what's wrong here. Um, so these, as you can see in this picture, this diagram here, T corresponds to the top of the loop and B corresponds to the bottom of the loop. And we also have centrifugal forces extending from the top and the bottom. And um, I'm not gonna go super into depth here, but basically um, if we calculate the centrifugal forces at the top and the bottom of the loop, we find that they differ, um, they differ in 4G. So in zero gravity, the centrifugal acceleration difference between the top and the bottom of the track is 4G. And you might think this is okay because 4G is less than 6G, but we haven't applied gravity yet. After 1G is applied, we know that the centrifugal force at the top is 1G and at the bottom it's 7G. And this is simply, 7G is simply too much for humans to bear. So uh, we'll have to look at some other designs. Uh, which brings us to Anton Schwarzkopf, who was a mechanical engineer and roller coaster designer who found um, in his research that the radius of curvature decrease is as, at a constant rate in a safe loop. And this ensures that riders are subjected to less than six Gs throughout the loop. So when we look at relationships between arc length curvature and the components of our function, we know that the radius of curvature is inversely proportional to cur curvature meaning that um, if r decreases at a constant rate with respect to arc length, we know that our curvature increases at a constant rate with respect to arc length. So because k is directly proportional to arc length s, we can write k equals cs. And we also know these other, um, we also know these other relationships simply by their definitions of curvature of the x component and the y component. So integrating d theta equals kds gives us um, the integral of kds, and then we can substitute in cs for k, and that gives us theta equals one half cs squared. Now that we know that theta equals one half cs squared, we can substitute in one half cs squared wherever we have theta in the other functions, which gives us our components, uh, which are as follows. And these are the components for our position function with respect to arc length. So now that we have a position function with respect to arc length, uh, we can use it. We can also reparametrize it to um, t if we need to find anything at a particular time. Um, for the purpose of this project, we don't necessarily need to do that, but I've included that information here just um, to show that it is possible to reparametrize it to t if needed. So graphing R of S yields a special curve called a clothoid, or a curve with constant decreasing radius of curvature, which is incidentally what Schwarzkopf wanted to find when he was building his roller coaster loop. But we're not done yet, because remember this equation? We have C S squared, and C is a constant of proportionality, which is specific to each loop. And we still need to find our specific constant of proportionality for our roller coaster's clothoid. So using the function k of s equals cs plus the initial curvature, um, we can use that re linear relationship between curvature and arc length to find the k values at any two points on the curve. So you can use any points on the curve. I used the maximum um, 
I use the maximum curvature and the minimum curvature of one seventh and one fourth. And using one seventh and one fourth, which were my two radiuses or my two curvatures, um, I was able to compute C to be 0 0.00375 for this particular loop de loop. So now all we have to do is plug and chug. Uh, we can plug in C into our R of S position function and we end up with a complete position function for our curve. So um, this position function results in a loop-de-loop, -loop, which is defined by um, this clothoid function over here. And it results in all of these loop-de-loops and loop-de-loop -loop designs are designed, or excuse me, loop-de-loops are Today's loop-de-loops are all functions of curvature, and they're all modeled on clothoids. So now let's discuss just a couple limitations of the study. So we set z of s to zero in our position function because we considered it to be negligible. In reality, z of s is not negligible. It's very small, but it's not equal to zero. So when we design a roller coaster in the real world, it's important to account for even the tiniest things like these. So an important note, not necessarily a limitation, but our equation describes half the roller coaster track and the other half is symmetric to the first half. So um, our function with a clothoid describes half of this track and the other half of the track is the same clothoid which starts at a different point. And all roller coasters today or all loop-de-loops today are built in this fashion. So significance in today's world, um, most of our loop-de-loops, our vertical loops in amusement parks today are based on clothoids. So um, we have Schwarzkopf to thank for that, uh, for our rides like California Screaming, um, amusement parks all over the world, and some you may have even written, such as the one in Six Flags Texas and Six Flags, California. So that's the end of my presentation. Thank you all for listening and um, check out my animations, which I have linked as well as my research paper. Thank you all so much. And that's the end of my presentation.